Welcome back, everybody. We had some audio difficulties just a moment ago, uh, but we're back now. It's time for SKT versus Samsung. Yeah, it looks like I kicked something out, but we actually finally got it in. Zoo versus Solar is going to be our first matchup here. We're going to start off with the ZBZ. I believe it's mostly um, mirror matchups here. Maybe we've all of them are. We've seen a lot of that ZBZ, recently. PvP, TVT, and TVT. Okay, wow. We're going to have four mirror matchups potentially here tonight. Possibly even five. We don't even know what could happen oh. in the Ace match. But we saw a that ton of mirrors true. yesterday. It feels like the Koreans have pretty much decided which maps are good for each race in Pearly for these best of ones. Yeah, it's kind of turning out that way. I mean, you look at the first map, it's going to be Expedition Lost, C2 Zergs. I mean, a lot of people saying it's a Zerg map. You get two Protosses on Deadwing, no surprise there. Third map, it's going to be Coda, two Terrans. Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense. And then it's uh, Echo for the fourth map, two Terrans once again. I thought maybe you'd see some Protosses, but you know, it's not a bad Terran map either. So, you know, maybe they just had some extra Terrans they wanted to play, throw them on there for Echo. But yeah, regardless, a, a lot of mirror matchups here. It's getting interesting. Yeah, it, it certainly is. I mean, we saw a lot of mirror matchups yesterday, not even necessarily on all the same maps, uh, but I guess different teams have different ideas about which, uh, you know, which sort of race is stronger yeah. on the maps. But uh, yeah, interesting to see two Terrans on Coda. Uh, there's a lot of potential for aggression on the map because it's not a really yeah. long rush distance. So if you end up fighting a Zerg there and you get ahead, you can keep kind of parade pushing and. There's a lot of different reasons, I guess, why you would, you would think that Terran's the, the race to pick. You also have to keep in mind which uh, players of your opponent's team are strong that might come out on the map as well. Yeah, each team course. has strong players for each race. Yep. Well, here are the matchups here for SK Telecom T1 versus Samsung Galaxy Con. It's going to be Sue versus Solar to start things off. Then we got Classic versus Deer. Then we go into Innovation versus Bravo. And then we got Dream versus Reality to finish things up for that ace match. Yep, Bonnie Research Station will be the, the ace match map. But to start things off with Expedition, then Deadwing. So the Deadwing PvP, we've seen a lot of those recently. And uh, they end up going longer a lot of the time. Seeing Phoenix has become a bit more popular here in Korea, but they're still not the norm. But they're we're almost seeing them like every other game. Yeah, about about that uh, about that amount here. Um, I'd say even like 60% of the time. It, yeah. it comes out very, very often these days. Um, players even trying to rush out of Stargate to get extra Phoenixes on your Protoss opponent. It's uh, pretty interesting the way that matchup is going these days. So PvP not uh, that kind of awkward, boring matchup that some people think to, uh, think it is. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I enjoy it a lot. It's it's changing. It's changed a lot. Um, it's going to be really interesting in Legacy. Uh, I played a bit of that and watched a bit of that recently. When I got back from Tokyo. Will Innovation overcome his slump in the Pro League? We'll see. <laughs> that is the question, Wolf. And uh, also, will Solar be able to show his ZBZ like he did at Gfinity? I actually heard about that. He played a lot of ZBZs and did quite well. Yeah, well, this is what Solar is famous for, is doing well in a matchup for like a short period of time. Everyone thinks he's the best in the world at it. Yeah. And then like he... his ZBP, and then he came back and got wrecked a bunch of times. Yeah, it's but... like as, as soon as he has like, as soon as everyone thinks he's the best in the matchup, oh, that's yo. when he stops yeah. doing yeah. well. <laughs> well, we're going to talk to our coaches now. Uh, both these teams. What did you think when you saw the entries today and saw all the mirror matchups? He actually expected that there would be a lot of mirror matchups after looking at the maps. In this round, it tends to be that some races have certain advantages on certain maps. So it will be hard to avoid mirror matchups here in Korea. And he says that's why he thinks there are a lot of mirror matchups uh, recently in Pro League. Kind of just echoing what we just said, basically. Yeah. So talking to Stork now. When I saw when I saw the entry, I thought that uh, I kind of figured those players were going to come out on those maps. I thought a lot about like players I wanted to send out. It's going to be a lot of variables here in the mirror matchups. But I'm hopeful that we're going to get a good result. It's really interesting that uh, in both coach interviews we had today and yesterday, the coaches like to seem to put some emphasis on chance in mirror matchups. Hmm. 
Uh, He's uh, saying Sue's doing really well in Pro League. And what do you think about Sue as a player? He's a veteran player for our team. <laughs> and since he's been a gamer for a long time, it's kind of hard as a coach to control him. But he's thankful that Sue listens to him very well. And he's been a pro gamer for seven years. And there's not much for me to, to tell him. I can't really control much. He knows how to practice. He knows how to be a pro gamer. So he's uh, just kind of letting him do, do his thing. And it's working out. Wait, who's the uh, scariest player on Samsung? He thinks the coach is the scariest player. The playing coach of Story. <laughs> he says they need to shake the coach in order to shake the whole team. The Samsung coach feels confident going into today's match, says the SKT coach. But honestly, he thinks they are the weaker team today. And he says they are trying to provoke because we are actually the stronger team. But our mentalities are not going to be shaken. They will have a firm grasp on their mentals today. Holding on tight. See if Stork, he has one chance to reply here. I admit that uh, SKT is a really strong team. But when I practiced as a player, I had two wins against SK Telecom players myself. And also, I was very strong against SKT in StarCraft 1, so I have a lot of confidence playing against them. They've got some history. Yeah. I, I like what the SKT coach, what Uve is saying actually, where he's like, oh, you're the weaker team. You're just trying to provoke us and trying to get us to get all riled up and not be focused. And we actually see that very often from the coaches of what we would call the weaker teams in these coach interviews, I would say. Yeah. They're always trying to be like, oh, you know, they're, they're a good team, but, you know, we've seen a weakness in them and we're going to exploit that today. And then the other coach is like, no, you're not. <laughs> we're going to kill you. Yeah. And then they usually do. Yeah. Um, what's really interesting to me is the weakest teams seem to seem to not do this though. Like if you look at Prime, or even if you look at like Choya, who's you know had some struggles in recent times, he usually just talks about his play his own players more than talks about his opponents. Yeah, that's true. It's these middle teams uh, yeah. that, that end up getting the trash talk. Middle and guys it. like Spanu maybe or like uh, yeah. and this Samsung, Samsung themselves. Yeah. I think Samsung's like the perfect example of a middle team right now. Yep. They lost a lot of great players before the season started. Yeah. But, well, Sue, 5 0 versus Zerg, 8 wow. and 3. Upwards arrow, couldn't go any further up. Might as well be pointed slightly to the left, man. <laughs> Might as well or go it should back. be like a little bit longer. You like put another red arrow down there. If anyone won like 10 in a row, I think you got to do that. It would yeah. be pretty sick. He's like, he's have a gold upwards arrow. Like, <laughs> the upwards arrow needs to look like a mushroom clown, like a nuclear bomb just hit. Yeah. yeah. Um, notably, these two players actually have a lot of history together. I think it was Sue, right, who lost to Solar at Stockholm, right? Uh, I, I, I don't remember the exact event, but yeah. I believe it was. And uh, one, one of those finalists, or one of those finals for Sue where he got second place as well in his big streak of second place finishes. Yeah. But since then, Sue has gone up and up and up, whereas Solar going the exact opposite direction, straight down. He is one in 10 this season of Pro League, 0 and 5 against Zerg, and just not looking nearly as good as he used to be now. No, one in 10 is pretty terrible of a record to have. Um, I mean, that's, that's pretty consistent. It's like that's enough games to be like you've been fielded consistently and you failed consistently. Yep. He's had a lot of tr trouble in these matchups where people prepare well. He does well overseas when there's no preparation. He's an endurance guy. He's I don't care who my opponent is. I'm I'm solid. I'll beat you. But when it comes to preparation, he has a lot of trouble. Yeah. Whereas Sue himself is very very strong. 
And let's take a look at the predictions here. Let's see what everybody thought about this matchup. It's a 6-0 for Sue over Solar. Not too surprising for where these two players are right now. Not yeah. at all. Not at all, man. Especially so Sue's flawless record versus Oregon Pro League. That's like the one thing you think about before you think about anything else. Yep. Well, let's jump into game number one here between SK Telecom and Samsung Galaxy Con. Sue versus Solar. Here in the top right in the red for SK Telecom T1, it is Sue. Oh, we know that, Quacka. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the bottom left in blue, and Solar for Samsung Galaxy Con. There's Frodo. Suegoya. <laughs> He's the best. Frodo is a very famous character in Korea. Um, because he's one of the stock emoticons you can use on the Kakao Talk, which is like the WhatsApp or Viber or whatever end up, uh, app you end up using to text your friends mm -hmm. uh, in Korea. So he's a very famous character that all Koreans know. And uh, the GG girls like to use these uh, these characters in their signs and their cheerfuls, as we've seen in the past. Yeah, they're pretty cute. They've also got uh, Quacka, as you said before. Yeah, uh, Quacka's real name. Well, the makeup girl told um, me before, but I forgot. Is it like Muzi? Uh, Muzi's the rabbit. Okay. I got that from the Burger King, uh, the, the little <laughs> Burger King uh, promotion they had. I, I don't actually know who Quacka is. It's uh, just Quacka. Quacka is what uh, Team Salmon calls him because he looks like <laughs> he looks like a Kappa face, but he's a Quacka. He's a yeah, he's a duck. <laughs> he's one of the <laughs> he's one of those uh, emoticons for Kakao Talk. I love that guy. <laughs> He's got favorites. three really good faces, too. The, they, the um, best one is the one that's just in parentheses hopeful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. I also, Crack Up, which is Quacka. Yeah. The original Quacka. The original Quacka. I love that, like, the three the three of us know this. You know, uh, Team Salmon knows this. Me, uh, uh, Moonglade, of course. But, like, there's only, like, probably, like, a very small percentage <laughs> of our like, audience. There's one guy out there. He's like, oh, yeah, I know Quacka. No, there's exactly. There's at least, like, ten guys out there who are like, I know exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> I use the cow talk, and I know these. I know, like, a bunch of, of nerds out there are, like, downloading the app right now. It's a they're really like, good app. What I, the hell is Quacka? You should use it. It's good. Who's that duck? Who's Frodo? I don't care. I only watch this for the StarCraft. Well, let me tell you guys, Quacka's a great guy. I don't you know. You should if, download Kakao Talk. I don't know if the GG girls are really supporting the players. I don't know <laughs> how they how they support so many different players in one day. Well, they just pick one that they like. Can't believe they draw the Kakao Emoticon. They should have drawn a Banshee or even a Wraith because because well, I don't know why Blizzard wouldn't make the Wraith back in StarCraft 2 and where's the oh, Goliath man. and. And I, I just don't know. The Lurker doesn't really feel like the Lurker in Brood War. I don't think they're really trying. What else can I complain about today? You're going really deep with that one, Wolf. <laughs> the never-ending complaint. Um, but, yeah, maybe we can, like, throw a picture up there of one of our chats where we put hopeful, hopeful, hopeful to the three of us. <laughs> like, yeah. We're talking about something. Um, by the way, for Twitter, I'm at Brandon Valdez. He's at Proxy Wolf. Moonglade's yep. at Moonglade AU. Shout out to Moonglade's Twitter. He's probably watching right now. Oh, I know he Hi, is. Hi, Moonglade. Hi, Moonglade Quacka. <laughs> oh, look at this. He's going to deny the scout. This has been like a really, uh, you know, slow-paced early game with the pool first into hatches. And now we see a gas coming up uh, for both players. Slightly delayed for Sue. But both of these players using the, the drone to try to deny scouting here. And we actually know he's just running that drone away. The Lings will actually get the scout off here. Um, whereas Sue's Lings are denied. Ooh. That's a that's a really good scout. Yeah. Sees the exact gas timing when it finishes. Yep. And that's that's really important. He knows he's gonna have his speed much faster. Although he doesn't have the money to buy it yet, and he is continuing to mine uh, with two, I believe. Let me check that. Yeah, he's two drones and gas on Solar's gas back at home. So he's he's building up quite a bit of it. I wonder if he's got uh, some sort of attack plan here. Whereas uh, Sue, you know, with a later gas, we don't know what he's going to do once he hits that 100. You know, we've been seeing a lot more Muta play these days. I think we saw a very similar build here where they go, like, very slowly into gas, and then eventually you just hit this timing where you got, like, 150, you make your lair, and then you take all four gases on two base. 
and then you go and you drop a Spire right away and you get out of bunch. We wow. saw Life doing this a lot. Yeah, and look at this, they're both going for Lair. Sue a little bit later, but he's adding extra gases right away. Make up for that gas deficit because yep. he, you know, and doesn't have it fast enough. At the same time, Solar, he just sticks on one gas. He's not going to add those gas. Oh, as I say that, he's going to add two right now. <laughs> <laughs> a bit later, though. Yeah, but at the same time, he does have an Evo Chamber and a Roach Warren. I think he might Come try to here. hit with like a plus one roach timing or something like that. I mean, just based on what we've seen so far. There's a roach warren for Sue coming down just a little bit later. These two have scouted each other pretty well with overlords, ling pokes, uh, and the like to know that there's no big attack coming. They don't have to worry about, um, you know, some sort of crazy speedling all in. There's no baneling nest. So they're very aware that this is going to be a quiet, slow early game. When you and your opponent both go pool first, it's like you kind of know that the other person is respecting you and. And you're just like, all right, well, I guess this is going to be a bit of a slower early game. Let me kind of get my lair out quick uh, and get some of these additional upgrades. So, I mean, we see the upgrades for plus one are coming out at, like, almost the exact same time. It's slightly faster for Solar. He also gets the roach speed faster Ooh. and is powering up those roaches pretty quick. Yeah, look at that. It looks like Solar did want to take the gold out on this map. Sue will know about this, but can he punish it? That's the... That's the question here. Well, he's definitely going to know about it. Even if he pushes those links away, this is starting to look pretty obvious, right? I think that Solar wants to do a big attack. I think he's going to just send some of his drones as goal base. He's not going to make two new more drones. He's just going to try to rally roaches across and end it. At least at least hit the third base very, very hard. Just based on how he's, he's kind of positioned himself here. Yeah. Kind of a cool idea on this map. Sue kind of just going for the safer third base. He's going to get it farther away from his opponent. But at the same time, kind of weaker on the left side if he's not paying attention. He's got some overlords over there, though, so you will know if any kind of counterattack is coming his way. Oh, this is tense. Sue's, you know, making a ton of roaches, but he's going to have... He's going to have a normal third base with no significant harvester lead, so he's just simply going to have a worse economy temporarily. Look at this. Big supply block for Sue. I was, I was taking a look at this. These guys are almost exactly even on every single unit. Even the drones, the queens, and the roaches and stuff. But I was thinking in my head, you know, it's going to come down to macro for these guys, especially with that gold base coming into play. And Sue kind of dropping the ball slightly. Well, let's see. Well, this is going to be a pretty even fight. Plus one for Sue, not done during most of it, though. So that actually is going to hurt him quite a bit. The roach count was very similar, though. Transfuses and some reinforcing roaches that are about to join will push Solar back. But that was a good trade for Solar in the first step of many. This gold base isn't being mined from it all. It is going to just kind of be a, a reinforcing point. It's going to be able to get roaches rallied across the map much faster. If Sue could actually kill these rocks and collapse them, it would actually do him a lot of good to stop this push. But he doesn't know how much Solar is really going to commit to this yet, so he's obviously got a lot to think about here about whether he wants to do that. And finally, the drones are at this base. Mm -hmm. That's going to give a huge boost to Solar's economy right now. Yeah, that's really big. Sue slightly ahead in drones. He's up eight. Somehow, like, squeezing them through, and he takes a good defense there with that one small fight we had. And it actually looks like Solar's gonna break the rocks for now. Maybe he'll go back and uh, kill the ice towards the back door. I wanna see that at some times. I wanna point out that even with the gold base, Sue has consistently been ahead in mineral income this entire time. I've been watching that on the tab. So that drone count makes a huge difference. It really does. Six yeah. drones ahead, it's actually enough to when you've got also three bases, it's better than it's better to have the drones than just having the gold. Yeah. And that just makes this game just incredibly even. Uh, like you said, continuing with that drone lead is Sue. He's up nine now, even. Solar getting the slight lead. And the upgrade's starting for the plus two at the same exact time, but Sue's gonna be the first guy to go for the contaminate. He's gonna delay that upgrade and maybe can hit some kind of plus two timing. I'm just looking at that income tab again like this is something I, I really I've like like to study for a long time um, it looks about even now with the 10 harvester deficit it looks like maybe the calculation hadn't factored in the, the minute of time it needs maybe a minute to calculate that the exact like you know how many minerals per minute are coming in and whatnot so I may have misspoken there I always want to give you guys like the most information possible on this sort of stuff um, but yeah I mean the the base here is a great forward position that's part of the strength of this it's not just about the money um, it's, it's obviously there's there's some other extra factors with this. If you can hold this gold base, when you want to take your fourth, you can take it further away from your opponent so it's farther away, harder for him to attack you. Whereas if Sue wants to take a fourth, he's going to either have to take the one that's really far to the left, which is, you know, further away but somewhat more vulnerable. Or if he wants to take his gold base, it's easier to attack in the late game when you're both maxed out. 
Uh, so, just some things to think about. Mm -hmm. Seems like uh, Solar is going to be the first one to go for Burrow and Burrow movement here, going for those upgrades. But Sue following suit finally breaks that rock tower down, and breaks the rocks that fell from the rock tower. And so he's got that open up here. Sue just playing very passive, as is Solar. Neither player really trying to even do any harass. Just playing the big macro game here, sitting back, waiting for their opponent to attack. I mean, looking at Sue's position here, he's just going to keep the concave and take more bases and get up his economy. He has no real reason to attack with the position he's in. Sure. This is, um, like you were saying yesterday, or as I was saying, things get a bit roachy sometimes in this matchup. Mm -hmm. and that's what we're seeing here. It's a lot of contamination. We saw yesterday even Spore Crawlers being built to stop this. We're seeing this actually affect the Burrow movement and the plus two attack for both players actually quite significantly. But because they've done it to each other about the same amount of times, it's still pretty even, these upgrades. Yeah. Um, and even taking a look at larva counts and the bank, they're almost exactly even. Like, this game is about as even as it gets in a mirror matchup. Sure. All right, Burrow movement is not yet done for Sue. Not an important thing in a fight like this. Concave is all that matters here. Plus two, not ready for Sol uh, Solar, which I think is part of the reason why Sue's going to try to trade some of these roaches out. Notice how he fights a little bit, then pulls back so he can actually maximize the concave a little bit. Yeah. Never really fully commits. He's really just poking at these roaches. Really good control out of Sue here. Incredibly done. Always fighting until it until he ends up funneling, and the second he funnels, he pulls back. Yep. He fights again, and he funnels, he pulls back. Every time, and he has the upgrade advantage. There is a little bit of harassment going on, though, at the third base. And he's starting to lose some harvesters, I believe, over there. Yeah, right. there's a queen and a spine crawler dealing with it, but at the same time, Sue is just remaxing and only roaches. Um, once again, very, very even. You look at the roach counts here. This will be finally cleaned up. That harass going on at Sue's third base. Sue is just micring this so much better. He's absolutely abusing this position here. And he's getting better trades. And eventually, that's going to give him a better bank. And he's going to be able to eventually uh, wear down Solar. Solar does kind of finally push through with a better roach count that he has. His upgrades have finished. And uh, you know, with even upgrades here and the defender's advantage, and so many of Sue's roaches being weaker, Solar starts to push this back. Yeah. Sue is Once again, very, so very even. Very even. Sue, it looks like he kept up his macro a little bit better back at home, too. They had very even banks, but Sue's got more roaches popping out. You can see the difference in the supplies and more and more roaches pouring across here. It looks like Sue's getting a very slight advantage. Sue literally just microed better in a fight that happened constantly, plus upgrades. Yeah. And look at that. Even Goop's there on the hatchery, delaying that larva count. Getting Sue just a little bit farther ahead, and once you start that snowball using the same exact units, it's really hard to get back in the game. Dance now it's dancing now. the roaches. He's like, you defeated me in that one finals. I defeated you here at Burley. The things that Sue did to get ahead were very subtle, but very impressive. GG. Contamination more, uh, more consistently. Stopping that plus two, so taking a fight with plus two for longer. Playing with classic there. <laughs> um, <laughs> then then uh, was able to just fight in that concave. And notice how every time he moved back, it was a minimal movement. If you if you want to look at that fight and look at go back and look at like the movements that Sue made back and forth, they were very slight. Whereas when Solar moved, he often moved his whole army, and he moved it in much much lower, like. Taking two steps versus taking five steps with a roach means you lose a whole attack. Every time you lose an attack, when we're talking about roaches versus roaches, they do so much single target damage. Yeah. You're losing so much DPS, you're going to end up losing the fight eventually. It was actually a really beautiful micro. I love that you point that out because it just seemed like he was more active with his roaches, just to add on to that a little bit. Like, when Solar was trying to move into a better position, when he was on move command, Sue was actively attacking, like, doing a little bit of extra damage to the front roaches, and he just keeps taking, like, slightly better and better trades just because of, because of his army movements. It wasn't even really about the concaves there. They were pretty equal, equal concaves. Yeah, but every time Sue started to funnel a little bit, so where he was back. going to the concave, he pulled back, but but just slightly, like yeah. just barely, because if you take too many steps while your opponent is shooting at you, you're gonna take too many hits. Yeah. Solar sometimes moved a bit too much, and that was like very, very, it was a very small, better micro that we saw from Sue there. It was, it was really cool to watch, actually. Even though I, I think a lot of people think Roach versus Roach is boring uh, to watch, I feel like when you see like the subtleties of it, yeah. it's, it's pretty about cool. The little things. Yeah.
And also cool to see Sue sit down right next to Dark and have a little chat after that game. He's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a boss, man. You taught me everything. Who knows what's going on in that, in that house, man. I mean, Dark was able to take down Life recently in the Kespa Cup. Yeah. So uh, definitely some ZBZ secrets being traded around there in the SKT house. Both of those guys looking really fantastic in the matchup right now. Absolutely. Well, Classic versus Deer is going to be the next match. One of those matches that could, you know, could go either way, but I feel most people are favoring Classic based on his yeah. recent successes.